Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look and testing at the testing the Dial RC engine 4 in 1 ESC. Now this is a pretty cool little ESC. I mean it looks pretty awesome. It has a nice fat heat sink. Um, it is rated for 40 amps. So it's a 40 amp 4 in 1 ESC. That means each ESC in here is rated up to 40 amps. And it is a BL Heli 32 ESC. However, you don't get some of the features you do usually get with the BL Heli 32 class ESCs. For example, there is no current sensing for each uh, ESC. There is no telemetry wire. So take that into consideration. And obviously, there's no RGB LED. Now, it does have current sensing, but the current sensing is for the overall uh, component here, or the overall board. And the way the reading comes out is through one of the wires here, which would connect to your flight controller and give you the current, you know, the current reading that's going through your motors and on all that kind of good stuff. Now, this thing does have a 5 volt regulator on board, which is pretty cool. And uh, some of its specs, it's a 40 amp ESC rated for 50 amp burst up to 10 seconds. And something that's very important to also take note of, uh, this is rated for a maximum of a 5S LiPo. So if you're planning on building a 6 inch build, I, I don't recommend you, you stick this guy on because the FETs on here are rated for 5S basically. So you kind of want to just uh, yeah take that into consideration. Uh, before picking this up if you had in mind of a 6s build now you can possibly get away with it but you also have a higher probability of actually burning it so take that into consideration so let's take a look at this so overall i mean as you can see here we do have email headers right here and this is too you know dal rc is coming up with their own flight control where she will just stick on top of this guy and be good to go now these holes are a little bit wider than usual it's because they do give you rubber grommets here to soft mount it so when you put it together with the flight controller since they're going to be connected via pins here the vibrations from this will affect the flight controller so they do give you a way to actually um, soft mount the ESC so you reduce vibration so that's pretty cool but overall the packaging is actually very nice on this uh, this ESC uh, they also do provide us with a Rubicon low ESR capacitor so that's pretty interesting and something that's pretty cool about this actually from the specs so it has a built-in capacitor array or a low ESR capacitor array that is up to 1150 microfarads so basically there's a 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitor built into this ESC and we're gonna see how well that performs now if you take a look at it the quality looks very very nice I can tell you that uh, it's it seems like it's made very good actually uh, so like I mentioned it does have a 5 volt regulator we do have our battery pads right there and these you know the the, the solder pads here are just very nice and large and uh, they seem to going to be very easy and simple to solder on so that's very good to see now removing the heat sink was a bit tough but I, I did manage to get it off as you can see here so it was held together with this um we can call it uh, thermal compound I think adhesive that's what I think that's the correct way to call it and uh, it, was, it was pretty pretty much uh, just stuck on there so I, I don't think that'll fall off anytime soon by itself so let's take a look here now, as you can see here it has huge array of capacitors these are very tiny capacitors but they're stating that they're low ESR capacitors so that's pretty interesting we got four up here four up here we have a trillion down here and we have three here and three here so that's pretty cool there's your current sensor right there so that's nice also and here's a little mosfet so they're saying that they're low resistance mosfets so in theory that would mean they could um there's no resistance for the power to the motor or just it has less resistance so in theory you would be able to get the full power of your motor or get the very good power delivery down to your motor so that's what that's what that means um and I think that's really it right now. So uh, I think I think we're enough talking right now. So let's just stick it on the bench and let's just get started.
All right, guys, so the results are in, and let's just quickly take a look at these graphs. Uh, on the upper left here, we have the Dal RC engine throttle noise level. Uh, you got 10% throttle, 25, 50, 75% throttle, and 100% throttle. Here is also the Dal RC engine. This is my custom noise script, as you can see. Uh, there it is. We'll, we'll get into that right now. On the bottom left here, we have the Emacs Magnum throttle, uh, throttle level noise test. Again, 10%, 25%, 50%, 75% throttle, and 100% throttle. And here we have just the Tico 32 ESC, the normal one. I did get the 4-in-1 ESC, Tico 32 4-in-1 ESC. That will be on the upcoming video after this one. It's going to be pretty interesting, I think. You guys are really going to like it. Um, I haven't fully finished testing it yet, but it, it seems promising. Let's just leave it at that. All right, so let's take a look at the Dell RC engine. The Dell RC engine here on the throttle level noise testing, as you can see, the, the spikes on the transitions are very well, very good uh, filtered out. I mean, you don't have these very nasty large spikes as some ESCs do. If you compare it down here with the Emacs Magnum, this is the 4-in-1 ESC that came with the Emacs Magnum. You can see, look, look how dirty that is. And remember, you know, on 4-in-1 ESCs, all the capacitors are working all the time for however many motors are moving. So let's just say you have 50 capacitors on 4-in-1 ESC. It's not split up into, you know, uh, you know, a quarter of a quarter of the caps for ESC one. No, no, no. They're all for the same. They all work together. So basically here we had all of the onboard capacitors for the Emacs Magnum working for one motor, which is terrible. This is just one motor. Imagine if we put four and imagine if we put a 2306 motor, that thing would catch fire possibly. I'm, I'm just over exaggerating here, but I'm just trying to tell you this is not very good. Now, if you take a look up here, this is the Dal RC engine. Now, the, the, the capacitors on board, every single cap was used or was active filtering that one motor that was used to test, but it's still a very good test, you know. Um, it's a very good test, actually. I, I really like this. It does have, it does have, you know, it shows that there is, it's, it's possibly very good. However, and again, you know, this is does not simulate real world testing, but this gives us a very good example because four in one ESCs are still a bit more difficult to for me to test because uh, I don't have the current, you know, correct equipment to actually set up four motors and do this on the ESC to actually see its full uh, potential and how good it is or how bad it would be. But, you know, th these tests kind of give us some insight and provide us with some information that we could make an educated guess from. Now, from me seeing this right here, this is, I really like this. Uh, as soon as I ran a test and I just see consistent, very nice result after result. This is just beautiful. Now, let's move to the Dal RC engine's custom noise script. Now, as you can see here, we hit a maximum voltage spike of 23.4. I was averaging around 24 volts, if you want to put the average voltage spike, which is not bad at all. The minimum was 11.4, but I averaged around 12 volts minimum, which is also pretty darn good. So that's just, it's it's a overall, it's running very uh, beautiful, actually. So... This ESC seems to be performing very well, but again, you know, this does not simulate real world. This is just here on the bench testing with only one motor and all the capacitors on board were active just for that one motor. So take that into consideration. So overall, you know, from the 4-1 ESCs that I have retested or have actually tested correctly with the new setups, uh, this seems to be a very one of the best so far of the 4-1 ESCs. Now, I haven't tested many 4-1 ESCs, but as of the current testing stands, it seems like it's good and it could handle itself. But there's also something that's pretty interesting. The motor ran so smooth, it was just... It felt like it was underpowered. It was. It just sounded so insanely smooth, which I really liked, actually. Um, it was like buttery smooth, you know. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my previous video where I did the um, Yushin Wizard teardown. Uh, you saw how that sounded very rough. You know, you kind of get an idea being like, it's just very rough and it's like a grinding sound. This one was just smooth. So overall, you know, this is a pretty good ESC. I really can't say much other than just show you the results here and tell you what I got. But um, I do have uh, high hopes for this and I will be building it also. So I want I really do want to test this. I might stick it with a Maytek F405 uh, just because we know the Maytek F405s 
with the sensitive gyros, the older version that they stopped making. Uh, it's just not, you know, that one's very sensitive to what ESCs you place with it. So if uh, we don't get the yaw twitch with this 4 one ESC, then this should mean it's a very good 4 one ESC. And, well, that's it, guys. So that's really going to conclude it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I would really love it if you guys join my mission, join my Patreon, help me document everything. And you could also use the links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.